Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 24, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. Phone calls and SMS messages remain an important second factor to authenticate users, even though organizations like, for example, NIST have advised against doing so for a few years now. As a result, we had a number of high-profile attacks over the last year or so where SIM swapping was used in order to impersonate users. SIM swapping typically refers to an attacker registering a new or a second phone with a particular target's account so they're able to receive phone calls or SMS messages in addition or instead of the victim. In response to these attacks, the Federal Trade Commission now came up with a brief guidance for consumers on how to protect themselves from these type of attacks. First of all, they recommend not necessarily to reply to calls and emails with personal information, also to limit the personal information that's shared online, particular phone numbers, of course, and probably most importantly, to set up a PIN or a password for a cellular account. They also recommend just not to use a phone as a second factor, but of course uh, you don't always have the option to do so. It's a fairly nice brief and to the point blog post, so something good to share with relatives and others that may not quite be as aware of this particular tactic. A lot of modern applications take advantage of the Electron framework. Electron applications are written essentially using web technologies like HTML, style sheets, and JavaScript, and then executed on a system just like any other native application. Couple notable examples are, for example, Skype and Slack, but also Discord. And apparently, Discord has been abused recently by some info stealer Trojans. What this attack does is it actually adds additional JavaScript to Discord on the user's system that will then include the info stealer functionality. Since all the attacker has to do is add additional JavaScript, it's a lot easier to do than in a traditional compiled application, even though it's not unheard of that attackers are patching compiled applications. In this case, the additional code is then collecting some data from the user, most notably the Discord user token, things like payment information, but uh, also interestingly, the first 50 characters of the victim's Windows password. This particular technique has only been spotted on Windows according to the article here, but actually one sort of the attractive parts of the Electron framework is that these applications can run on different operating systems. So this is kind of an opportunity here for malware to be able to affect various operating systems without having to completely rewrite it. And Cisco updated an advisory that it originally released in August. This was the Cisco REST API container for iOS XE software authentication bypass vulnerability. The new information that Cisco is sharing is that there is now a proof of concept exploit available that's taking advantage of this vulnerability. They have not seen it being used in actual attacks in the while, but with this proof of concept being public and available, it's probably just a matter of time and not much time for it being used in the wild. The patch was released end of August and this is CVE 2019-12643. And for everybody concerned about privacy, the Tails Linux distribution released a new major update, Tails 4.0. This one is based on Debian 10 Buster and also updates all the major components of this distribution to their most recent version. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.